All right, what's up everybody? So in this video, I am gonna show you how to create your very first and very simple Swift package for the Swift package manager. And then I'm also gonna show you how you can incorporate that into an application. So there's three parts here. First part, we're gonna create a very simple Swift package. We're then going to push that up to GitHub where I will then consume that in an application. We're just gonna create a very simple application, uh, iOS application, just to show that we've successfully pulled down the package and we're making use of it. There's a couple of different ways you can create Swift packages. I'm gonna show you the more common way that I think it's used by most people, which is where you create a Swift package that then gets distributed via GitHub or something like that, maybe for other team members or open source. Now that way of doing it is to independently create a package and then bring it into an application. Now this will also serve to help explain how you can import other people's Swift packages in your application as well. So that's the route we're gonna take here. So I'm gonna to go to Xcode and I'm gonna create a new Swift package. It's gonna ask me for somewhere to put it. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop here. Let's make this window a bit bigger. I'm not gonna to get too much into the details here. Just gonna cover on the Swift package, the things that you need to know. So you can see in the package manifest here, it's put in the name of our package. We can leave that alone. The one that matters over here is under sources. My library is where the actual source code is. And you can see it creates this very simple struct for us. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expose this. So I'm gonna make it public and I'm not gonna bother with the string that they've put in there. I'm gonna make a public function and I'm gonna call it hello to you. It's not gonna take any arguments, but it is gonna return a string, okay? And I'm just gonna say return hello to you, okay? Very simple. So that's gonna be our package. So this package is gonna have this one function here. Now, when I go to use this, of course, I'm gonna pull it down from somewhere. So I'm gonna go over to source control here. And this part you don't have to do in Xcode, but it's, it's gonna be super easy for me to show you here in Xcode. Just gonna right click and because of the integration with GitHub, it makes it very easy. I'm gonna create a new GitHub repository, remote repository with this library in. So I'm just gonna say new my library remote. I'm gonna put it on my GitHub account. I'm just gonna say this is an example library in the description here. And I'm gonna make it private because it's of no use to anybody other than this video. I'm gonna go create. And now it's gonna go away and it's gonna create this for, this repository for me on GitHub and it's gonna push it, but it hasn't committed my changes yet, right? So if I commit my changes here with this function, so I'm gonna say added a basic example function and I'm just gonna push it. Now all I'm doing here, this is just you know standard source control. I have a video, I'll put a link up on the screen for you and in the show notes, in case you don't know how to use GitHub with Xcode. And I'm just going to commit this and push it. So that's it. That's this part is now complete, right? That's our Swift library. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close it here in Xcode. And I'm just going to pop over to that library. I'm going to find my library here that I just created. Uh, wrong one. Don't want to see my profile. We want to see my repositories. There we go. So there's the my library. Now what I'm going to do is, and you can see here it is, right? The one that was just pushed from Xcode. I'm going to click on this drop down. I'm just going to copy this URL and I'll, you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to close that. I'm now going to go back to over to Xcode. So now we're going to use this new Swift package that we've created. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm just going to make a very simple iOS application here. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to call it test app. I'm going to leave it as a storyboard. Of course, we want it to be Swift. I'm going to go next and store it on the desktop. All right, there we go. Okay, so at the moment we have a, this new iOS application. It's not using our new Swift library. So let's go ahead and bring that in here. If I go up to project and I click on there, you're gonna see this, this tab, Swift packages. If you click on there, it's gonna be empty right now, but this is where we bring in all of those remote packages that we wanna use. I'm gonna click plus, and what it's gonna do by default, it's gonna go out and it's gonna list the ones that it can find on GitHub, right? It's gonna start by listing my ones. You can see it there in my library. And you can see there's lots of ones from other people as well. 
Now you can search by name, right? I could do my library, but here's the thing, right? When you're creating these, there's, and I'll hit return, there's a good chance that you're gonna have the same name for your repository and your pack Swift package as many other people. As you can see, look at all these my libraries, right? Now, you know, I can look down the list and try and find mine there. It's actually right there. But the other option is, let's just clear that out. I copied the URL for the Git repository to the clipboard. So I'm actually gonna paste it in there so I can actually say, look, I know where it is. Don't bother me, don't search for it. This is the one I want. It's gonna go away and try and find that. Now it's gonna come up and say, hey, which, what do you wanna do here? You wanna use like the next major version? You wanna set some restrictions, minor, range, exact, and you can set ranges here. Well, this is my repository and I know that I want to use, always use the main branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and say main here. Now, the reason I say that is because you may have, for example, it's common to have a develop or a production or a release branch, something like that. Now, we're gonna cover in a second why this is important. I'm just gonna go next and it's gonna try and resolve and retrieve that Swift package for me. It's gonna take a second to pull it in. It's gonna go, okay, I found this library here and I'm gonna add it obviously to the target that I've got here. Yes, that's what exactly what I wanna do. I'm gonna go finish. Now, you're gonna see it listed over here under Swift package dependencies. Let's say that you go away, you do some work or someone else does some work or something like that on this package. Well, at that point, your version is out of date. What you can do to check that is if you go up to File and then down to Swift Packages, you can tell it to update to the latest package versions, right? So that's a way to keep that up to date there. Obviously, we know this is up to date right now because I've just done it. Funny little gotcha here. You may be inclined to open this up to explore, which you can, and you can click on the source code if you click in the editor, it's gonna give you every impression that you can actually edit the code. Now, I'm typing away here on the keyboard and you can see nothing's happening. It's kind of a quirk of Xcode. It gives you every impression that you can edit the package right here. Uh, obviously you can't because this is just a dependency. It's an external dependency. Just watch out for that, okay? So let's go back to our view controller in our application. We've now associated this Swift package dependency with our app. So let's go ahead and use it, right? So we wanna import it first of all. So I'm gonna say import my library, right? Now, something else you wanna look for here, if we go over to our target, you wanna make sure under here, under frameworks, libraries, and embedded content, it actually is listing that Swift package there. And sure enough, it's there, right? So back in our code here, we've imported my library. Now what I can do, is I'm just gonna create a new instance of it. So I'm gonna say, let my library equal my library and, and just instantiate a new instance, okay? Now you're gonna see it's got a problem here. It's gonna say my library initialize in is inaccessible due to internal protection level. So I wanna point something out here that I feel like Swift Package Manager in Xcode should do by default. I'm gonna go back to the recent. I'm gonna open up my library again. And what the problem is, I don't have an init function in here, right? These are accessible because they're public, but it's not initializing like I'm initializing back in my application. And you certainly don't have to initialize, um, but I think it's a good practice to just go ahead and add a public init, right? Doesn't actually have to do anything, but I think it's good practice to have one in there because at some point this library, depending on what your usage is, you may have a reason to do something there with that. So I'm just now gonna commit that change. All right, and I'm gonna say I added the init and I'm gonna push that up to the GitHub repository. Okay, and close that. Now, let's go back and open it up in our application. You can see we've still got the old version, right? That new function we just wrote has not come down into our code. So I'm gonna go file, Swift packages, update the latest package version. It's gonna take a second here. And now when we look, you can see it's updated it and it's got the init, okay? So back on the view controller now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna try doing a build and the build's gonna succeed, but it's gonna say, hey, look, you initialized an instance here, but you're not using it. Is absolutely correct. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say print my library dot hello to you. So 
in that library, I'm calling that function, which as we know is going to return a string, right? So I'm going to build it, make sure everything's okay. I'm now going to run it in the simulator. So it's going to take a second to spin up here. And we're not really interested too much in what happens in the simulator because it's going to print out in the console for us if everything goes according to plan. And sure enough, if we go over to the console here, it's printing the string hello to you, which is coming from the function within our library that we included in our application. And that is the very basics that you need to know to bring a Swift package, to create a Swift package and bring it down into Xcode and use it in your application or use anyone else's in your application. Hope this has been helpful. Go to compileswift.com for more videos. Uh, you can also like, subscribe here, of course, leave comments. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at CompileSwift. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and any requests or suggestions for new videos.